Where the hell did you bring me? We're in Baltimore, man. Well, it's I like the that. bee capital of the world. I hope, I'm glad you uh, came along with me today, man. I got a surprise for you. I'm at uh, Charm City Mead Works. You familiar with who they are? Yeah, I've heard of them. Had their stuff pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're local to Maryland and Baltimore. And uh, I've been working with them on a project that I wanted to, you to be part of, just kind of help out and see what we got going on here. Um, but we, uh, we're, we're going to see what, the, what they have in store. They've built a, an observation hive. You know what an observation hive is? Yep. yep. Yeah, they're going to take be bees from Bohemia Apiary, and we're going to install them in the observation hive today. And we're really? going to let the people okay. of the Baltimore community visit with these bees and be able to see the bees working with the Mead Works company because that's really what mead is. You know, mead comes from honey. You, you mean I could drink mead and look at bees? You can. Oh. Look at bees, drink mead, and enjoy honey. Now we're thinking. Let's take a walk, take a look yeah, what they got inside. I'm excited. This is pretty neat. It's a pretty nice facility they got here too. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed. A lot of outdoor seating and all. Some I think they have some, more they, they have a, an event this weekend, I believe. So we're perfect timing with bringing the bees in. And uh, it's just a good environment to, to really kind of do what we do. Let's take a look inside and see what they got. Thanks. this place Rob this is like a, a bee heaven right it's pretty impressive I love all the artwork all the antiques it's this is awesome yeah this is this cool is hey awesome. hey James how you doing man James pretty good Steve good, good to see, see you. you man yeah you too thanks for inviting us down man this this place is impressive awesome. yeah we're gonna have to get to work putting your bees in so uh so stay tuned here on the channel we're gonna be doing an install like we said of bees here at Charm City uh, mead, mead Works, Charm City Mead Works here in Baltimore. Uh, we're going to install some bees from Bohemia Apiary. So stay tuned on the channel. You're going to want to watch this one. This is going to be a good one. I'm James uh, Boycourt, and this is Steve Marsh. Uh, Charm City Mead Works uh, started back in 2014, or uh, some might say a lot longer before that. I've been keeping bees and uh, making mead for about 20 years now. Uh, and very early on, kind of had the thought that maybe mead would be a really good thing, uh, you know, that people would enjoy. Uh, and we've grown quite a bit over the last nine years doing this. Uh, we're about to celebrate our ninth anniversary, which is a big deal for something that started on a kitchen counter. Steve uh, has been a really good friend since the beginning. I've got him into beekeeping. He's a, I don't know, if master gardener or whatever the term would be to do Steve's- uh, Very large gardener. The farm operation uh, justice, but uh, Steve's uh, uh, partner and uh, become a really big part of Charm City and we started scheming a little bit about what we wanted to do uh, make some changes around here and one of the things uh, in addition to this sort of uh, bee museum or bee culture museum of all the antique beekeeping equipment and other stuff uh, was to put in a large observation hive uh, which is why we're here today yeah, hi, my name's Steve Marsh. Um, I've been involved with Charm City one way or another for probably about nine years. Steve, Steve was one of our first customers. Uh, and as he reminded me, uh, he asked if he could be involved pretty much right away, actually. And, uh, and I have been in one way or another, but more absolutely. recently spent a little more time. Uh, I, I love this working on creations like this. and. Um, James actually gave me my first beehive probably nine years ago almost now, and uh, which subsequently I really uh, improved my gardening. Uh, I noticed a lot more uh, pollinators and uh, a lot more fruit and vegetables. Um, so I had consistently kept beehives until just recently and uh, decided that we'll try to get a beehive here in the city. And uh, James had always 
wanted to do an observation hive, but we were really just trying to figure out how to make it work and not have the bees flying all around the need, reclaiming their honey or... Um, yeah, we had to wait until we had air conditioning in the space. Uh, so, you know, previously we would have the doors open all the time during the summer, during the honey flow. And when you work with as much honey as we do, we expected that would be a really big problem. We're going to talk about an observation hive. We're going to install bees in an observation hive. Uh, so many people who keep bees keep them in a box, and you can never really see what's going on inside that box and the the the, uh, the bees and how they work together and the structures that they build, whether it's the honeycomb or the honey stores or just spotting the queen inside a colony. That's what an observation hive allows people to do, both beekeepers and non-beekeepers alike. It gives them the opportunity to look at the hive on the inside and see that inner working, that ecosystem that's going on inside, that super organism that's happening inside the colony. So James and the team here at Charm City Meadworks has designed what I would consider a very unique and awesome looking observation hive for their customer's benefit, to be able to see those bees working inside the colony, making the honey, you know, growing that size of all the bee colony, the bees that are in there, the, the brood and such, and we'll, we'll talk about that once we have actual bees in here. But James, tell me a little bit about this unique structure that you built, this observation hive. What makes it so unique? Well, uh, for one, it's really, really big. Yeah, obviously, uh, yeah. I, you know, I've worked with ones that were a lot smaller in the mm -hmm. past or even medium sized for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, academic purposes. Uh, this is meant to be a showpiece uh, for our tap room. Uh, Steve, our partner who got involved in doing this, uh, you know, we kind of looked at some pictures of observation hives and he clearly, you know, sort of was like, oh, let's do this one. <laughs> uh, it's going to be uh, pretty unique. We're trying to start it as a uh, two queen system. So there's a divider in here that'll allow the, the worker bees to pass back and forth, uh, but not the queens. Uh, we have multiple entrances to see how they'll uh, how they'll work cleaning it out and sort of the flow of the bees into the hive. It's uh, you, you have about 14 frames, is that right? And then they're split in half here in the middle. So for yeah, what? 14 yeah. full deeps and then two uh, okay. you know shallow supers at the top. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a it's a big one. Yeah. There's not a lot of these. Uh, you know, out there in the real world, you, you tend to see some observation hives in people's houses or occasionally they bring a small one to a fair, that kind of thing. But something this large is, you know, they're very few and far between. So we've got a few things with this that are kind of experimental that we're trying out. It's going to be a learning experience for both us and for the bees. Yeah. And it looks like it articulates against the wall, so it gives the opportunity for people to see really both, both sides. sides of the nest and, and really try to spot the queen, which is a lot of common things that, you know, people that are non-beekeepers like to do. Um, we have two colonies we brought from Bohemia Apiary in Warwick, Maryland, that are kind of sitting over here relaxing a bit until we get them settled in. Uh, we're gonna install them in this, this observation hive um, and so that the bees will be able to, again, we can observe them. Their customers of Charm City Bee Works can observe the bees that work that create the honey that creates the mead, right? So that's kind of the point of the story. Yeah, and for us, it's a really important part of what we do. Sure. Uh, mead is a alcoholic beverage made from honey. And, you know, bees are such a central part of making this happen that this is a really good way of helping communicate what the bees are actually doing when they make mm -hmm. honey, uh, how their life cycle works and kind of get people more into the idea of mm -hmm. uh, bees and a better understanding of sort of the magic that goes into something yeah. like this. Yeah, and there's a lot of things on the wall that you've seen up here behind me that they've collected that are basically pieces of, uh, of art, but yet it's an education. It ta tells a history. It tells a history about, you know, what, what people have been be keeping bees for so long. And these are all smokers and there's various other small objects and pictures and and things that, that have been collected to show their the patrons of uh, Charm City Meadworks. Now they can see the bees, which is really cool. 
right? So you can see the bees in action. Uh, a lot of us you see on many of my videos and other videos talking about bees and how, how important they are to our ecosystem. And I think it's important that we, we kind of pay homage to them with this here when they're making a product for us as it relates to mead. Um, really, they make the honey for the mead, but you know, this is just our way to be able to show and educate and in Charm City to educate yeah. the community about bees. So it's gonna be an exciting project. I can't wait to get the bees inside this thing. All right, so let's do it. Let's do it, all right, let's get at it. That's not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. That let's, worked. Uh, maybe kind of These are closed carry closed and open up yeah. the door. Yeah. We can lean it down probably. With these pins with the pin in the top and the bottom. To open the doors? To come out. The, the pins okay. are pinned with a, um, uh, you got that? You want to do it under the, uh, this thing? What do you think? On the tabletop, maybe? Maybe over here by the uh, picnic tables in between. There's a flat area that we can carry it pretty easily. Okay. Let's do that. And that way we can lean it against the table if we need to. Set it down right here. That's good right there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, it is just so darn hot out. So that way... It, it's out of the sun. Yep. And they can. Uh, you need something to keep it from. Well, I think we're. I think we might be good, but we think we open the doors. We'll probably need to make sure we sure it up. Whoever's here working with me on it. We got a few hands yeah. available. Awesome. All right. Up. Okay, so we've moved the observation hive outside for obvious reasons. We took out all the frames that were currently in it and then we're gonna replace them with the frames inside the colony you see sitting here on the ground. Um, this is a traditional Langstroth hive, which is that box style hive that most people see. This is just an APMA product, so it's, it's just a brand of a, that style Langstroth hive. What that really means is, um, so Langstroth was someone who didn't invent the beehive. You might hear that synonymous with beehives, Langstroth hives if you're a beekeeper. He didn't invent the beehive. What he invented, or he identified at least and discovered, was something called bee space. Bee space is what bees need to work the comb from either side, and that bee space that you see there is really what he started to discover as important for removable frames, being able to pull the frames, pull um, the combs out of the hive, and then we use frames to do that. So the, the bees will build their comb, which you'll see in a moment, on these type style frames, again, Langstroth style frames, in which we can remove them out of the hive and in this case, put them in the observation hive. That's really the concept. Uh, most beekeepers are familiar with that style of frame. The difference here is that's a Langstroth style hive. This is an observation hive that uses Langstroth frames, if that makes sense. So let's get to work. Bees are probably anxious to get out of here. Again, with the Apamay products, it's really nice because you can pull that lid off and you still have that inner cover that allows the bees to kind of stay below until you're ready for them to come out at you, essentially, to come out. Um, they propolize it down. So it will stick down. Okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check our queen. 
I'm putting these in here because I'd like to try to start to get them to think this is their new home. The reason why you smoke bees is that it allows them to, well, for one, it blocks the defense pheromone that they potentially could, could be emitting for the other bees to create that activity, that aggression to be defensive for their colony or to protect their colony. Uh, smoke also, um, in, in addition to blocking their pheromone transmission and the colony, there's a theory or there's been a dis discussion around the fact that the bees, when smoked, think there's prim a primordial forest fire of sorts and they rush in and gorge on honey in the combs. And if any of you know when you, uh, you drink a lot of mead or you, um, you drink a lot of sugar or you drink a lot of anything, you kind of become lethargic and you really don't care about the world around you. So that's kind of the, the theory with smoking. I don't like to smoke my bees a lot, but in an installation like this, I want to make sure the bees are calm, they stay together. So when we move them in this, this observation hive, the majority of them will get in the hive. Um, and we'll talk about how the rest of them that may not make it in there once we transport inside, will get into the hive. We'll talk about that in a bit. Our queen's in this cage down here. I hope that she made it. She should, she was nice and good to go earlier. Yep, she's good to go still. All right, so in, a, in here, the bees are attending to her on the outside, but on the inside, you can see She's running around. She's the larger one with the larger abdomen. She's marked, you'll see that eventually. But we have her and we're gonna set her aside so that she can naturally out of the shade so that they can, I might even put her in here until we move her down. So we pull some of these frames and we're gonna to start to set them inside the observation hive. These are not Africanized bees, can you tell? <laughs> he works with a lot of Africanized colonies so he sees a lot of bees that are a little more aggression, aggressive, but with these you can see, they're not that aggressive because they're, really they have a job, that's the point, is that their, their purpose is to do their job and not worry about defense of the colony. They don't feel like they're being, um, they're in trouble or the colony's in trouble in any way. That's why they do that, that they're a little calmer. All right, smoker. Oh, that's okay. And what I'm trying to do now is get them to kind of coax them to more of the one side so I can pull the first frame out. When you pull frames out of a, a colony, you wanna make sure you don't roll bees. Remember that space that, that was discovered before by Reverend Langstroth, the bees can back to back work the combs with no issue. But when you introduce a human that wants to remove that frame that lifts it out, those bees can roll each other. There's a, there's a situation where you could roll your queen. There's a situation where you could roll bees. And when you do that, they then express that defense pheromone. They get angry. They want to defend their colony. So the reason why we do, we smoke them a little bit and then we try to pull this outside frame out as best as possible. You'll also see that the frames are sticking together. Everything you see along the edge of this right here, that's <coughs> called propolis. It's like bee glue, spackle on your house when you're, when you're spackling up the walls, sealing up all the cracks, keeping the air out. It's also antimicrobial, antibacterial. Lots of people use propolis for purposes of, you know, throat lozenges, healing wounds. It's a very important product of the hive that's hard to harvest. So I'm doing this as gentle as possible not to roll as many bees. This is what we have as an outside frame of resources. So you can see on this frame here, this is called, this is uncapped nectar or uncured honey. Any of the honey that's capped in the middle, which you see all right here, is capped honey, okay? And you can see they're going to town when I pulled some of that away, drinking up some of that honey. And if you feel this frame, if you can feel it in the, in the video, um, there's a good solid five, six pounds of weight in this because both sides are full of honey, if that makes sense, okay? And typically when, we, when you have a hive the way it's structured in a Langstroth, the honey, honey stores will be to the outside. The nest is in the middle. Think of a ball or a basketball in the middle. The outside frames are where they store their honey. Pollen, typically that around the perimeter of the nest. So we're gonna take this one first frame of honey and we're gonna put it as a barrier. If I can get my fingers in there. The, the door end has to go in first. Yep. In a traditional hive where you have honey supers or boxes on top, 
Once they've established the honey, the bees typically, the queen that is, don't typically cross that frame of honey. So we're gonna use this as sort of that barrier between the two colonies, even though there's a way for the bees to get through, through a queen excluder on top to both this top colony and bottom colony, we're gonna allow um, the honey to be that barrier as well to this, so the queen will pretty much stay to her nest down here. And this queen will stay to her nest up here. That's the goal. So this frame has full honey stores on that side. There's some pollen that they've stocked in there and there's some honey and pollen you see in this side too as well. So again, another honey store, which we're gonna put up to the top. Why do you put the honey up to the top? Well, the bees will orient, organize it, not orient, organize the, the honey, typically the top of the nest. Um, I don't know the, the exact science behind it. You probably can better explain, but my understanding of it is <clears throat> that the heat of the hive will rise to the top, right? The honey stores that they're keeping are stores for their resources for future so they can survive winter and so on and so forth. It's also typically when you look at a frame and you'll see on these middle ones, on a frame the way it's arranged, and we'll, we'll point that out, the honey's along the top band of the frame, the top of the hive. Because again, that's where the bees are gonna move up as the heat rises in the colder months or when they nest and they build that nest. It also gives it the ability to um, cure faster because of the heat. Uh, that's up there as well for their wings. They'll still fan that honey, the uncapped honey, to get that heat so that it can dry out essentially and they can cap it off for future. That's my understanding. If you have anything to add to that, that's probably um, the concept at least. She's hot. Oh, she's still good. Hanging out, girlfriend. Here we are. I'll leash you in a second. All right, so with this frame, you'll notice it's a lot different than the other frames. You'll notice that band of honey that goes along the top half. There's a band of pollen that runs right here. And then you can see in the center, if you look really closely in those cells, you're gonna see different parts of larva. There are little eggs and you're gonna see larva. And they're kind of at different stages. And that's really the bees, it's the nest, it's the beginning of the nest. They're gonna flood that cell, that egg, with uh, royal jelly to allow that egg to, once it hatches, to have something for that food for the, um, the bees to eat and that larva to grow. So this is the beginning part of the nest that where we'll put them in. <clears throat> All right, so this is an example of brood that's capped. And if you notice in between, they're starting to go into a mode of winterization. And how, I do, how do I know that? If you notice the pattern, they've got pollen and nectar in all the holes. They're backfilling with pollen and nectar because they're, they're trying to bring as much resource in as much as possible to get this thing settled for winter. And on this side, the whole side is covered with eggs and larva. So again, the next generation of bees. Make sense? And that's a frame, a good frame of pollen, good pollen resources on that. See that? And brood and pollen there. Again, more brood, big frame of capped brood. There should be resources on this one. Yeah, look at that, big frame of resources, all honey and nectar and such. 
Now, the fact that we put this on the bottom, it's not gonna mess them up. It's just gonna give them resources closer to the nest. We are working with, again, an observation hive that has to reorient the nest. We try to keep the brood in the middle so they can keep it warm. Um, resources on the outsides. I'm gonna finish it off with a new frame for them to work on. You can see what they're doing here with the queen. Keeping her cool, trying to feed her, try to attend to her. They smell her pheromone. We're gonna release her in. And then. So we can all see her go, on, go at it. But I wanna put some, just before I do that. Let's release our queen. Ready? She's gonna take off between the, those, those frames, so. There goes some attendants that came out. There she goes. She's down in the hive. Okay. She's got a white dot, white dot on the bottom. And these girls are already moving their way up. It just sits on top of that, yeah. those frames there. That's fine. All right. All right. You see that? If I can get her out of there, I caught her. You have worked with small, a lot of small hive beetles before? You ever worked with them? Pain in the butt, aren't they? I just saw one run. I'm trying to see if I can get them to. They won't have anywhere to reproduce in the mead works. Right. All right, so while that's working through, I'm gonna go grab the other hive and we're gonna kind of repeat the process up here. drinking that honey up. She just got out. She just got out of town. So we've got all the bees in the colony, or in the observation hive. The colony's in the observation hive, I should say. Um, and all I'm doing now is just trying to clear some bees off the, the track for the door so that they can go into the hive and start to settle down. We've got both queens in, and hopefully the other queen did not make an exodus to the top. You all right over there? Yeah. All right. You want to stand so it straight up? There's, there's these two pins okay. that you put you in there. You can come up, yep, absolutely. We sort of have a, them pinned with a screw. So you turn it where the, the screw is at, right? Yeah. Yep, I see it. Yep, go, walk to the door. Set that door in there. 
Shut that door. Shut, Shut the door. door. Shut the door. Oh, if you could set it right here, that's fine. And then I just come and hold it. Come hold it for me just like this. Just like that. Hold it up. Yep. Just like that. Perfect. Yep. Good? Yep. The honey dripping on the... How much do you figure it weighs? I mean, they, they were able to move it. Probably, right. probably 70 to 100. Somewhere in there. Two guys can take it. Oh, <laughs> Don't get this in Africa, right, do you, so Brian? Let's make sure I get a good amount of them off, and then we'll open the door quickly and carry it in. Uh, I think we got most of them. I think carrying it vertical is probably a good. Better, yeah. Now it's okay to carry it vertical. All right, ready? Okay. Open that door for me. Grab, a, grab that door for me. I don't good. Know what I can pick up by this. Yep, you're good. Clear, clear, clear. Yep. Good. Okay, ready? One, two, three, up! We got the bottom rub. Yep. Hold on. Pushing. Hold on. Pushing. All right. I think. Push it in a little. Here it is. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. We're about to top. Uh, top is. Uh, Get your fingers out of that bushing thing. Yeah, it definitely locked into place. <sighs> Alright. Are you happy with how it is? With your... yeah. Looks like your wax dropped at the top a little bit. As it, with all other crazy stuff that we've done here, seeing this become a reality is really something. It would not have happened without you, Steve. And really, even without uh, without Jason and being able uh, to help do this, put their hands in it. There's been a lot of yeah. It's going to be a great educational tool and something really, really cool to bring people in and educate them with. I can't wait. Let the bees advertise for us. Yeah. We'll attach little. Time to get some honey in here. Little, 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 little tiny, uh, you know, like uh, tail uh, streamers from them that say, "Come to Charm City Mead Works." I'll grab one of those gravity dispenser tabs. And we'll just yeah. Tap one of the, one of the ports here. Uh, Jason, I think per your prediction, the ones that are in here are banging around in the lights. Oh, in here? Oh, yeah. They're going to go to the nearest light and bang up against it. I'm getting them all out as I can now. Got one here and one here. Have you seen this working yet, Rob? So when they're in here, stand there and smell that. You smell the banana foster? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They're expressing that pheromone. That's banana foster for banana. You ever smelled the, the banana here? Yeah. Here's one. He's hanging it. Yeah. <laughs> Went off into the ether. The door's open on there by yet? Yep. All right. All right, we finally got the bees back inside. We've got them installed in our observation hive. You can see them. They're all so we're trying to figure out what they're doing inside of a new home where people can see in the glass, the light kind of, kind of, kind of puts a little bit of a, a burden on them at the moment. But I think what's going to happen over time is you're going to see these bees are going to figure out what their jobs are. We talk about on a lot of my videos, bees have a job to do in their life, whether it's tending to the comb, tending to the brood, which you see up here, or, or just keeping the honey. 
uh, and, and clean and organized, they have to organize their hive since we've moved them out of a traditional Langstroth into this observation hive. It's uh, two frames wide, you know, six frames high, six frames, uh, you know, down on the bottom, eight frames, I guess, on the bottom. But we've got two colonies in here, a queen up top and a queen on the bottom. So they're going to continue to thrive. They'll follow out the various exits that they have set up, plumbed up here, and allow the bees to travel up outside and really and really just try to, to create that new, new environment, the new home for them and build it out. So I think the install went successful. Uh, I think, uh, would you agree, uh, James, that the install of bees went successful and, and now they're in their new home and they're gonna be kind of moving forward, would you I, agree? I'd say it's a huge success. I just can't wait to see how this does over the next few months. Absolutely, yeah. So the ne next is gonna be, the next few months are gonna be critical for them as they're kind of working on their stores. You can even see some bees right here moving along cleaning up the hive, whether it's larvae. Um, they're kind of, we call them mortuary bees. If there's any dead bees in here, they'll start to try to pick them up and take them out of the hive and drop them into the exit over here where they can clean this, this tube out over here. So it's gonna be interesting, like we said, for the next couple months and weeks and months as they kind of get established in here. Um, I think this is an amazing structure you've built here. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for the community to come in and, and observe the bees and that cycle like we talked about before. So. All in all, I think, um, I think it's a great install, great, great job, well done for everyone. Thanks for everyone that helped. Uh, you know, James, make sure you- uh, Thank you. No, thank you, sir, for letting me have the opportunity to come out. Um, if you're in the area, you gotta come to Charm City Mead Works. Um, if you're on socials, Charm City Mead, yep. at Charm City Mead, you can pick up and find out when they're having their any events here. Uh, you can find out when they're, uh, you can come see the bees. This is now they're here permanently at Charm City. You can come visit the bees, see what they're doing. Um, Naturally, we won't keep this uncovered like this. Most of the time, there will be a cover on it, or some of the time, we'll have a cover on it so the bees can kind of do their, their business in the dark. But when they are here and then they're open at Charm City, come visit the bees, say hi, come say hi to James and, and, the, and the other crew that are here working um, for, uh, for you to help provide mead to the community and educate you about the bees. So um, we're going to wrap up here uh, on another great install of Bohemia Bees. Um, and, and really just trying to, to help spread the, the partnership across Maryland and, and the community of beekeeping. Um, it's, been a, it's been a great day. I've, I've had a lot of fun, I can tell you. Come visit us on our channel. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Put a comment below if you liked what you saw. Share it with your friends. As always, we're continuing to grow our audience so we can share our experiences with the bees. Um, and and it be, it, well, as, as I always say in my videos, beekeeping with us is definitely, well, it's more than a hobby, sort of an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.